Okay, and welcome to chapter one. Uh, the way this works is uh, I go through the book uh, and call out page numbers for you to follow along. And, you know, I'm not going to read the book to you, but I'm going to call out the things that I think are important. That's the way these lectures work. I guess with a possible exception of the chapter objectives, I actually do kind of sort of read those guys. So, let's get cranking. So, in the beginning, uh, they talk about, on page two, um, they talk about what you're supposed to get out of this chapter. Differentiating among uh, laptops, tables, and uh, tablets, and servers. Okay. Describe the purpose and use for smartphones, digital cameras, portable media players, ebooks, blah, 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 blah. Describe the relationship between data and information. That's a good one. Uh, briefly explain various output options. Cool. Differentiate. Differentiate between the internet from the web. Ooh, that sounds like a test question. Uh, describe the relationship among web, web pages, websites, and web servers. Explain the purpose of a browser, search engine, and social networking. Uh, briefly describe digital security risks associated with viruses and malware, and uh, other issues such as privacy, health, and environment. Differentiate between operating system and applications. Cool. Differentiate between wired and wireless technologies. Identify reasons for individuals. Might, which type of individuals would use what type of network. Uh, discuss how society uses technology and education and government and all these other local things. Uh, identify technology used by home users and corporate users, etc. Okay. So that is essentially the 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 outline. Okay. So again, starting on page two, there's a couple cool terms in here, one of which is they talk about uh, digital literacy. Digital literacy is, is a cool term. It talks about, you know, having a current knowledge and understanding of computers, mobile devices, internet, and related technologies. Uh, there's also an issue called the digital divide. Digital divide is a social system where people have figured out that uh, there are different classes of people. Some people have access to internet and computers and other people do not. And it's considered, you know, social inequality. Uh, and so this is kind of a cool topic and I may actually have you do a little bit of research on the digital divide. Okay, so continuing on page four, uh, they talk about some classic definitions of what a computer actually is and talks about an electronic device operating under the control of instructions stored in its own memory. Okay, uh, a better way of describing a computer is essentially what it does. Uh, so it accepts input, it uh, does some sort of processing and produces some sort of output. That's, that's a cool way of describing it without using a definition but describing what it actually does. Um, continuing on page four, they they, uh, they talk about the different types of of computers. And so, sure, we have laptop computers. And laptop com computers are typically small, of course, lightweight. Typically, are going to be you know running on batteries. Uh, they they suffer from you know um, first of all, they have to have a, a cord plugged into them for power, for unless you got to run them for not for very long. Um, usually don't have that many ports, usually doesn't have that much processing power. It's not designed for that. It's designed to be lightweight and portable. And it's pretty straightforward what a laptop is and isn't. Tablets, and there's a gazillion different kind of tablets these days. I mean, you know, there's the, the typical iPad scenario, and then there's Android tablets and Windows tablets and, and uh, Windows RT tablets, and I may actually have you do a little bit of research into that. Uh, tablets are typically designed without a keyboard, so you would use gestures, handwriting, an on-screen keyboard, or perhaps a voice in order to have a tablet uh, do what it is you want to do. Primarily, the difference between a tablet and a laptop is a tablet is primarily designed for consumption of information, uh, like playing a video or reading a book or listening to music, but you would not typically use a tablet to write a novel or compose music or create 
you know, no one's going to write a novel on one of these things. You might read a novel on it, but you're not going to write one on it. Okay, so it's mainly for content creation is the is the the laptop and the desktop. Okay, so continuing on the desktop. Now, the traditional desktop was, you know, pieces. You had a display, you had a keyboard, you had a mouse, you had some sort of a box. Uh, either it sat on the floor uh, or it sat on the on your desk somewhere. And more and more nowadays, you get, get these things called an all-in-one, where you see the keyboard and your mouse, but you don't actually see the box. Well, the box is there, it's just behind the monitor. Well, behind the monitor sounds a little disingenuous. Uh, the case that holds the monitor is fairly fat and all of the computer components are actually built into the case. So often they call this the tower and uh, and you know how it is like if, if you were to turn off hit the power button right here in the corner of uh, this monitor you know your machine doesn't turn off does it because that's just the power for the monitor and there's going to be a power button over here someplace well on all in ones it's not the case uh, when you hit the power button here the whole thing goes down so it's kind of confusing when you're switching back and forth between the two because you you know, you're used to having an all in one and then uh, you go back to a traditional desktop and so you hit the power button on the monitor and boom, you go off and leave and you come back the next day and turn it back on and it, <laughs> everything is just where you left it last you go oh shit hopefully nobody saw that kind of thing okay cool uh, so a traditional desktop is where content creation takes place. This is where people do serious work. And next, of course, is servers. And uh, servers are typically things that you're never going to see in the home, but they're dedicated machines that are designed to perform a particular service, like a web server. Um, it's a machine that's designed just to connect to the internet and serve web pages. That's all it does for a living. So it doesn't need to have a very big screen. It doesn't need to have a super duper graphics processor like you know, like you're going to be playing games. You're not going to be playing games on a server. Uh, so small keyboard, small mouse, small monitor, all that's perfectly fine because it's just used for brute force. Okay. Uh, on page five, they have a, a thing about touch and some of the gestures, the how you can make touch work. If you have a touch device, you might want to take a look at that uh, at that table on page five. Okay. So continuing, all right. So on page seven, they talk about uh, the mobile and game devices, and they talk about a category called smartphones. And to tell you the truth, the only you know it used to be a clear distinction between a smartphone and a dumb phone, I guess, dumb. Um, in that, a smartphone was the phone that uh, had uh, connection to the internet, had a browser, and you could uh, do email and all these kinds of things. And then the lines kind of got blurry. And then it got a little more complex on what is a smartphone and what is not. So nowadays, even the ultra cheap, you know, you know, pay pay per month phones you buy at Walmart for like twelve dollars, those have internet and they have email and things. So what is a smartphone today? Eh, uh, most people talk about smartphones being the phone that has a, the big graphical screen. That's what they call a smartphone. Okay, so the definition is kind of crazy. Digital cameras. So anybody know what the most popular digital camera in, in the world is today? It's not a camera, it's a phone. The most popular digital camera in the world today is the iPhone. Yep. Now, some uh, digital cameras, particularly the high-end ones, might actually have a Wi-Fi connection in them so that when you're taking pictures, it'll sync to your phone. Or it might have, you know, a Bluetooth connection or all these other types of networking connections, which we haven't talked about yet, um, that allow the, the devices to talk to each other. Uh, portable media players, uh, the, you know, used to have the iPod that you would carry around with your music or, you know, uh, perhaps even uh, for viewing uh, videos as well. Uh, those are pretty much well kind of secondary now because everyone has a smartphone and so you wouldn't want to carry both an iPhone and an iPod. Uh, you wouldn't need to because one could serve the purpose for both. Ebook readers, you know, electric electronic books, uh, you know, the Kindle was probably the first one that came out, super device. Um, if you like uh, the, the, the feel of pages, 
Uh, Kindle's pretty cool. It's also a complete tablet. You can play games on it. You can surf the internet. You can do all sorts of things. So once again, the lines are kind of blurry. The thing about the Kindle is typically it's designed with a slightly different type of display. A display that could be black and white, or you can get color ones. But the di display is designed specifically for doing text, not necessarily for graphics. So they're you know readable outside in the bright sunlight, all these kinds of things. So again, it's a specialized tablet specifically designed for that type of content consumption. Uh, game controllers on page nine, uh, you know how it is. You, you go buy an Xbox or one of the other uh, game devices and instead of just playing games on hooked up to your television it really becomes the the entertainment hub that's where you go rent movies uh, you have a service through the internet to pull down the latest uh, television shows you want to watch you're using it for all sorts of things other than uh, playing games I know people that bought a game console and never played any game other than what came with it because they bought it so they could do streaming video to their television set. Okay. <clears throat> so continuing on, uh, there's a, a critical distinction between data and information. And this is something that you really, really, really need to know for a lot of reasons. One of the reasons is it's going to be on the test, but that's, that's practically secondary. You need to know this. Data is sort of like raw stuff. It's just stuff that gets sent into the computer. And so data by itself has practically no value without being processed. It's sort of like the raw ingredients. I'm getting ready to make chocolate chip cookies. And so I've got flour and I've got sugar. Well, that's the data, okay? Can you eat the flour and the sugar? Well, I guess. I mean, you know, geez. So here, have a stick of butter. You know, you could do that, right? Um, the processing, which means mix all the ingredients together and put it in the oven, and then it, it gains value when it comes out the end. So instead of having just you know sugar and butter and chocolate chips and flour as individual ingredients, I've added value by mixing them together and baking them, and now I have chocolate chip cookies. And chocolate chip cookies taste a heck of a lot better than just eating a handful of flour. So data is this raw stuff. The processing turns it into something that's more valuable. Now in the business sense, forget about the kitchen analogy. In the business sense, you know, I've got uh, every sales record from Walmart for the last five years, okay? That'd be this massive amount of data. And what I want is not that data. What I want is what are the trends in tennis shoes, okay? So the trends in tennis shoes is what the value is. The whole marketing data, that's just this raw stuff that has some value, but typically isn't very valuable unless you do something with it. So it gains value by processing. Okay, I think you got that one. If not, uh, read this section in the book because you can pretty much be guaranteed that's a fundamental concept that you need to know. Okay, uh, continuing on page 12, they talk about uh, using uh, inputs. So what are the types of inputs? Well, the, the most typical input, of course, is the keyboard. It's been around a, a gazillion years. So it just allows you to type data in there. Uh, pointing devices are also a type of input, you know, using the mouse like I've got here. So I move the mouse around and I can click on things and add things. You know, that's an, a, an input device. Like you wouldn't typically use the mouse for text, but you could. Um, and uh, one of the things they talk about is the mouse operations. Uh, you know, pointing at something, clicking at something, right clicking, double clicking, and being able to drag. Uh, we're actually going to go through some of this in, in an upcoming video, uh, so don't get too freaked out by this. Uh, hopefully, for that matter, hopefully this is stuff that you already pretty much well know. Okay, we're coming up on the 15 minute mark, so this is a good place to stop. We'll catch you guys again in just a few.